Awesome, welcome back everyone. We're going to crack straight on with the next SQL injection video, which is the blind SQL injection with time delays. As you can see, I haven't solved it yet, so I'm gonna go into this blind as much as sort of possible. Um, depending on how long this takes, maybe we will do just one, uh, one challenge or maybe I'll do two or three, but let's crack on. So this lab says, this lab contains a SQL injection vulnerability. The application uses a tracking cookie for analytics and performs a SQL query containing the value of a submitted cookie. The results of the SQL query are not returned and the application does not respond differently by based on whether the query returns any rows or causes an error. However, the app, uh, since the query is executed synchronously, it is possible to trigger a conditional time delay to infer information. To solve the lab, exploit the SQL injection vulnerability to cause a 10 second delay. Okay, so let's just click on any of these. And in our HTTP history, we should have, there we go, we have a cookie. So let's send that to repeater with control R, it's full screen. And we should be able to inject our cookie like we have done previously. Like Portswigger said though, the application won't change in its response. So we have to solely do this based on time delays. Now, there's a couple of ways that I would go about this. So firstly, I would try and make it sort of a conditional. So I would do something like an and statement, an and condition. So do an apostrophe to break out of the current query and do and, and now we have to guess which type of database system it is. So let's try MySQL first and just do sleep. Then we can comment off the rest of that query. So that didn't work because we were expecting a 10 second delay, but obviously it's not. We, we got the response straight away. So let's try PG sleep. Actually, that should be double dashes, which didn't work. And I think the next one we should try is Oracle, which is a, which is a bit different, but let's try it here. So we want to do EBMS underscore pipe dot receive underscore message. That's a oh, 10. Okay, so that didn't work either. Uh, the only one we've got left, assuming that this approach is going to work is Microsoft. So let's try wait for is it underscore delay or is it space delay? I think it's space delay. I go zero, zero, 10. Okay, so none of those worked. So that makes me feel like this approach isn't going to work. Uh, it's either that or it's not Oracle, Microsoft, Postgres, or MySQL. However, as we're not looking at no SQL databases, we're only looking at sort of SQL databases, we can assume that that isn't the case. We can assume that SQL is, is the way forward. So as I showed in the previous video, you can concatenate strings. So we're gonna concatenate the current value that we have there with a sleep. So we can do two pipes and we can also do, let's start again with my SQL. Oh, I think why am I taking that sleep? 10, let's see if that works. Nope. Then I think we went to Postgres, so let's do PG sleep. Oh, okay. It looks like it's sleeping. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this is working. Either that or it's crashed, but I'm gonna guess that worked. Perfect, there we go. So assuming that I click on this, it should say that we solved the lab. Um, if not, we can just copy the URL here. And, oh, there you go, it tells us there anyway. So that was it, it was a, it was a Postgres database and we could use the concatenation to sleep as well. So as normal, I'm gonna bring up my notes here. Nope. And I'm going to assume that the query looks something like select uh, tracker from tracking, whatever, where tracker ID is equal to the value that we had here. Uh, did I spell that right? No, I didn't spell tracker right. Anyway, not that that matters. But the reason why we may not have been able to do the, the and thing, so ideally what I want to do is and pg sleep then, something like that. But the reason that might not have worked is because this might have been wrapped in, in brackets or anything. So obviously we would have had something like that, which would have maybe caused a syntax error. Um, I'm not 100% sure on, on the sort of back end of this, but they are two valid ways of approaching a blind SQL injection using time delays. But the, the correct way was concatenation there. That seemed to work. So awesome. Um, that was pretty quick. So let's, let's go on to the next lab, I think. So 
similar to the last one, we just need to probably do a conditional lookup. And if the condition that we give it is correct, then we will sleep for five seconds, 10 seconds, one second, maybe. And then we'll know whether the thing that we're trying to retrieve is correct. Okay, so let's crack on. Let's click on this again and open up our burp suite. And we should be able to see But if we intercept this, we click on here, we can intercept this and send that to repeater. We click send. So again, the SQL injection is going to be blind, so we're not going to get anything back from it. So we need to determine what the correct sort of character is going to be for, for the username and the password. We know the username is administrator because that's what was given in the lab description. But now we go, we we have to get, guess the password. So let's put in the apostrophe here and see if that breaks. I'm not sure we're going to get anything different. No, we don't. Okay, so we we got to go into this completely blind. What we can actually do is do the select case when sort of approach that we did last time. And the what we want to do again is sleep if the condition is correct. We want to and we, we are going to assume that it's still Postgres because that's what it was the last time. Um, generally, they follow on from each other. And Postgres supports something called stat queries. So we can actually end this query. Uh, in fact, let me pull up my notes again. and I'll show you what I mean. So in here, we can do select tracker from tracking where tracking ID is equal to the one that we have here. So that's what the query looks like at the moment. So what we want to do is we want to run two queries. And we can do that by giving another semicolon here. So in our in our um, injection point, which is this bit here, we want to do a single quote and end the query. So like before, and then we can comment off the rest. If we do that, that won't throw an error because this the rest of this is queried, is commented off. So from here, we can do another select. And in this case, we want to do a select case when uh, we can just try like something that we know. So A is equal to A. Then we want to sleep for 10 seconds, else we want to sleep for no seconds. And then we want to end. And then that should, oh, sorry, I just close it. And that should give us exactly what we want. So if we copy this payload here that we've written out and paste it into here. In fact, let's just URL encode that. Oh, and we also need to comment off the rest of this here. So what have I done wrong? Um, select case when a is equal to A, and then we do a sleep, else we do a sleep of zero, and then we end the query. That looks right to me. So let's try instead doing something like one equals one, see if that works. Ah, I know what we did wrong. That needs to be URL encoded. Okay. So the problem obviously there was semicolon to a cookie is, is a special character that separates cookies and I didn't URL encode it. So as we can see down in the bottom right here, we have the length of time that it took, which was 10.051 milliseconds. Uh, sorry, 10,051 milliseconds. Right, so we have the baseline of how we're going to approach this. So let's, we need this to be a condition what, that we know. And the, the condition that we know is the username is administrator. So we can do username equals uh, administrator. And then we want to do from users. We've determined now that there is a username called administrator, which is great. That's the first step of our, of our process. But now we want to do a and. So we want to make sure that we can find the password. And we know that the password is called password. Let's capitalize that and password. I mean, if we do equals test, right? So this should sleep for zero seconds because the password is probably not test. Cool. So again, we can use the length command in here. And we can say, hey, is the length greater than zero? Which should sleep for 10 seconds because obviously the length will be greater than zero. Awesome. That worked, so we know the length is greater than zero. Now we can do 10 again and just keep going up in increments of 10 to see how long it actually sleeps for. I might actually knock this sleep down to five seconds just so it's not so long. So let's knock it down to five seconds. So the password is greater than 10. 
This looks like something I'm going to have to do in Python in a minute. Okay, so the password is not greater than 20. Is it less than 20? It's not less than 20, so it's going to be equal to 20, I guess? Yeah, so the password is 20 characters long. Okay, that's not a problem. What we can do is we can write that Python, a similar Python script to what we had last time. So let's load up our code. And the, what we're going to do is we're going to select substring of password, the first character and the length of one is equal to A. And it's not, so is it equal to B? It's not, and C, and so on. And that's, that's basically what we're going to do. Let's copy this URL and we'll go into our code. This is the old code that I wrote. We could probably actually just change out some of this. Yeah, okay, let's just change out some of this. If you haven't seen my previous video, I'll link a, I'll put the link up to it on the, I think it's top right corner. And we, and you'll see how that was written originally. We have a URL here, which we can just replace with our URL. Well, it's the same URL, just slightly different. And our cookie, which is somewhere, where's our cookie? So this is our cookie here, all the way up to there. Let's word wrap this, so we're not struggling to see the rest of the rest of the thing. And let's chuck this into here. Again, what we've got here is our cookie, and then we've got our second select query, which is a stack query. So we know the username is administrator, and we know the substring is the area that we want to extract the, or the, the method that we want to use to extract the password. So the first character here, we can actually get rid of this. And we want to do a string of l oh no sorry this is the get length we already know the length but we'll, we'll put it in here anyway okay as this is the get length function what we're going to do is just determine the length i know we've already done that uh, we did that manually but we can do that programmatically as well we want to do and the length of password is equal to now we want to do the string of length which is the loop here and in this if statement we want to do r dot elapsed dot total seconds and that will give us how long the response took. And we know it needs to be greater than five seconds. And if it's greater than five, then we return L. So L is the length here. That's one way of getting the length. So this will programmatically find the length. And then we need to find the actual password. So let's grab, in fact, let's go back to burp and we'll grab that cookie straight out of here again. And we'll just put it straight into here. We know now that we want to find the, the substring of password and in here, to put uh, string char. No, this is site. No, this is string. So this is the offset that we have. And in here, I want to do string of char. And that'll extract it. So all the only thing we need to do again here is change this to be the elapsed time. So we want to do r dot elapsed dot total seconds is greater than five. And that should work. So, I mean, I've, I've actually overwritten this file, but that's fine. We'll just run it anyway. I know this isn't lab 12, but again, I just overwrote this file back. Some. So if we run solution, that should give us some information back. It's actually gonna take a while, so I'll cut it here and I'll, I'll come to the end when once it's, it's done its thing. So we found the length of the password, which is 20, which we knew anyway. But now it's going to start extracting the password, which again is going to take a little while. It shouldn't take too long, roughly five seconds for every character that it finds. Great. So you can see here now that we've retrieved the password. Now that didn't take very long, maybe a couple of minutes. But the problem that you'd have when doing a SQL injection, like on a, on a full database, is there's obviously a lot more data in a database than there is just these 20 characters. So it could take a long time if you if you wanted to dump an entire database. Let's get rid of that one. And if we go back to here and try and log in, we should administrator. And then that's the password. Awesome, we've logged in. So that's that lab done as well. Right, we solved the lab. Thanks for joining everyone. I'm going to leave the last final two SQL injections for the final video on this series, and then we can move on to a different topic. But thank you everyone for joining, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.